Hey everybody, welcome back. Today, we're going to be going over the basics of web scraping using the beautiful soup module for Python. We're going to be approaching this topic with the assumption that nobody knows anything about how to web scrape. So rest assured, if you have no experience, we're going to be starting at the beginning and going nice and slow to make sure we cover all the bases. Some of the things that we're going to be covering over our data scraping video series is going to be first off, the beautiful soup package. Um, we're going to be going over where the documentation is, how to find documentation for different Python packages, and that information is going to help you with any package that you want to use in the future, not just with beautiful soup. That's just the example that we're using today. We're going to go over the documentation. We're going to go over a few quick examples uh, going straight from documentation into code just to kind of show you how everything's going to work. And then we're going to be using basketballreference.com as an example of a real-world website. So, without further ado, let's get to coding. All right, so the first step in learning any new Python package is going to be to find the documentation online. So, what we're going to do is open a new window in Chrome. And we're just, and this is how I look for documentation for any new package, not just this. I'm going to type in the name of the package, beautiful soup, Python, and then just put documentation. And there's not a whole lot of websites out there that are trying to key in on people looking for documentation for specific Python packages. So that's usually going to get you right where you need to go. Um, so there's a couple different uh, examples here. Some you can tell are going to be more like introductions and maybe some walkthroughs, Python for beginners. Rummy is actually going to be where you want to find the beautiful soup documentation. That's the official documentation here. Um, so as you can see, beautiful soup is a pretty well documented package. Um, some are well documented, some are poorly documented. Uh, so I, I would encourage you to, if you want to try out some new packages and learn some new things, start with something similar to what you need that's well documented. If there's not a well documented version for exactly what you need, to get familiar with it because it, it's I, I've worked with poorly documented packages before and it's just f so frustrating to come across errors and issues and not be able to find any real information on why. Fortunately, the packages we'll be using in this series are going to be pretty well documented. Um, so let, let's look through here. So we have a quick start. Um, this is just an example, some HTML or a, a little dummy website that they've set up here to use for their, their little tutorial. Um, just just some story, a story from Alice in Wonderland, the Dormouse's story. And it's gonna walk you through how to set up a soup object using beautiful soup. Um, and you can kind of see here, that this is what the soup prettified object is, which is gonna make it a little bit easier for you to read. So you've got a head, you've got the title, the body, um, different classes. And this is how most websites are going to be broken down. Um, if you want to pull out specific things, soup.title is going to pull out the title there. Title.name is just going to pull out the name. Um, title string is going to be the string there. So it, it takes a little bit of playing around to understand what's going on with a website. So this is a good starting point to kind of work through and practice a little bit. Um, for instance, an anchor here, the a reference to another website. It, it, you can pr you can pull every link found on the website. So if you have, for instance, a page with a bunch of different links to different pages and you want to be able to pull information from all of those, you don't have to go through and copy every single URL into your code and tell it to loop through those URLs. Instead, you can generate that list by pulling them directly out of the existing web page and then looping through that list. So you, if you, once you get a little bit better um, at, at noticing those things, you, you can make some very efficient... Uh, Python code. So th this is probably where you want to start installing beautiful soup. Um, you want to make sure to follow any instructions based on the operating system you use. A simple pip install beautiful soup 4 or bs4 is going to get you what you need. Um, you can find that. I believe I did beautiful soup in my welcome to Python introduction video. So if you'd like to see it in action, feel free to go look that up. Um, it, it should come installed with the parser if you try to use LXML as your parser, HTML5, and it doesn't work, you may need to do a pip install LXML. 
Um, I've never had to do that individually, so I think it comes as a dependency either with the native Python download, Anaconda's packages they have built in, or Beautiful Soup itself. I'm not positive. I've never had an issue with it. LXML is going to be the parser that I use most often, though. So let's get into some examples here. So we are now going to go to basketballreference.com. And I'll have links to all of these sites in the description, so don't worry if you didn't catch it or can't read it in the little browser bar there. And we're just going to take a look at seasons 2019-2020, and we're going to look at player stats per game. So for the current season, we have our different players, and they're just, you know, normal, basically box score stats. No, nothing advanced, nothing crazy here. Um, pretty, pretty standard stuff. But as you can see, this is a pretty big table. So th this could be pretty, and this obviously is going to be updated every time there's a new game played. There's new statistics that need to be brought in. So th this would be quite a pain to try and go through manually and keep updated. So this is what we're going to use as our example to walk through Beautiful Soup. So real quick, let's go ahead and get our notebook started up. So our first thing we need to do is import oh, from bs4 because that's the name of the actual package import beautiful beautiful soup without a space all right so we need beautiful soup another package that we will be using that you may need to pip install is going to be requests um, the request is a, a very important package that's going to help you interact with web pages, whether you're just getting information from them or whether you want to submit information to it. Um, for instance, if you have a, a data source, uh, maybe more academia focused that you have to log into, uh, you would be able to use the requests package to be able to send your login info to gain access to whatever data repositories that you have. Um, so request is a good one to learn. That's not the focus here. We're just going to import it for now. And then we need to import pandas as PD. And again, the as PD is, it, it is kind of an industry standard to use it that way, kind of just like import NumPy as NP. However, that's strictly for ease of use. So you don't have to type out pandas each time. You can type PD. And everybody, for the most part, is going to know that that's referencing pandas as you go. Um, you can do whatever you want. You can do goofy ones, silly ones, ones that make no sense. But as far as readability goes, it, there are a few packages that have kind of a standardized abbreviation that gets used. Um, and this is one of them. All right. And then after that, we're going to define a header. Um, and that's going to be... Th this is just kind of helping your program basically interact with the web um, so that what that's going to do is it's going to allow because when you go to a website there's a certain amount of information that gets exchanged back and forth between the servers on what machine you're on what type of machine you're on what browser you're on and how they interact with the actual websites so this is basically just letting the website know that you're coming from Mozilla Firefox 5.0. You don't have to be using Firefox to use this. Um, that's just what I use. You're more than welcome to use something else if you prefer. I, I don't care. It's not terribly important. But I, I have ran into some issues on websites where if I don't specify this, I get some goofy results. So I, I just tend to put it in every time, um, even if that website doesn't have problems with it. So now that we have that, um, we're going to point that URL and I'm going to try to have these up side by side um, if I think that's big enough that it can be read if my whoa why is that mess that's that's better so I'm gonna try this and we're gonna see how it goes um, if you can't read side by side here, my monitor is pretty big, but obviously it's going to be scaled down on the video. So if this is too small, let me know. Um, when we get into the actual HTML on the website, obviously I'll make that full screen. But while we're kind of going back and forth here, uh, I think it's going to be valuable to have them both up. 
So since we're just using a single website here, we're going to point to that website, basketballreference.com leagues NBA 2020 per game. And you may notice as you're going through, websites are going to kind of be set up in a similar way. Um, so you, you could automate looping through multiple webs, websites that are similar. Like if we wanted to do this 2019, 2018, 2017, we wouldn't have to copy that every single time. We could do four years in a list of those years, and then we could insert that year into this URL, and then it would update each time. Um, so we've established the URL. We need to actually get it in a format that we can read with beautiful soup. So that's where our request is going to come in. So we have our source, which is again the variable that just I've named so it makes sense. That's going to be our source data is request.get. And we want to get the URL using our headers that we defined. Um, so just a headers equals headers there because headers is the uh, the parameter name within the request.get function. That's why I named that headers uh, just to make it easy. So we have our get function, and now we need to get a soup object. So soup, I wish I could spell today, beautiful soup source dot content. And what that's going to do, this source is now view page source. So this is what that's pulling in, is the page source, which I don't know about you, but that means absolutely nothing to me, right? This means a little bit here, but all of this, I don't know. I, I don't know HTML. So, so you can get through here. Basically what this is gonna do is just pull the actual page content out and not all of this other, other gibberish that we, we really don't care about. So we're gonna pull the content out and we're going to use LXML as the parser. Um, that's what I, I mentioned a moment ago. If you don't have LXML, which it, I think if, you, if you've installed Python the way that I showed you in my Welcome to Python video, you, you shouldn't have a problem. So, going to do that. It's going to run. Let's go ahead and look at that soup object real quick, just so you can kind of get an idea. Um, and it's going to be big. Yeah. So, we have our soup object, which is gross. I don't, most of that means nothing to me. I wouldn't expect it to mean much to anybody else either. So we're going to erase that, blank it out. just wanted to show you what we were getting there. So how to actually navigate that. Um, we're going to come back to our table and we're going to right click and inspect. Now there, there's going to be keyboard shortcuts depending on your browser. If you know that, that's great. Um, it doesn't really matter. For me, in Chrome, it's inspect. I think in Firefox, Firefox, it's inspect element. Either way, we want to inspect. And this is what we have, the elements of the page. And we're going to zoom in that a little bit to make it easier to read. So this is where you're really going to want to spend some time figuring out uh, what in the world you're actually looking for on the page. Because I can look at this and I can say, oh, I want this table. Done. That's easy. But you need to be able to point um, your soup object to specifically in the HTML what you want. Um, and that, that, is a, that is a mindset that it, it takes some learning to get used to. Uh, I know a lot of people that have tried to start coding and getting used to having to specify exactly what you want the computer to do at any point in time is something that's hard to do. A lot of it's, it's a struggle as you know, like you can speak it in plain English. Um, and it makes sense. But when you talk to other people and you ask a person to do something, they can infer things based on what you're saying and their experiences. Computers don't have that. So you have to know exactly what you are pointing to, what you want, why, how many times, all of that. So if we're looking through here, you have a couple ways to go through it. <clears throat> if you're just wanting to dig through and learn, I would focus mostly over here. As I scroll down, you'll notice different things on the page highlight and pop up. Um, so you can kind of get a feel for how it's set up and what's where and how it's uh, broken up, 
one thing I can tell you, you're going to want to pay attention to the classes. Those are kind of going to kind of be groupings. For instance, you have this div class table outer container. If we expand that, then we have our div class overthrow table container ID div per game stats. That seems like we're on the right track. So table class. Oh, well, we do want a table. So sortable stats table, now sortable. So we have a sortable table here. ID is per game stats. Okay, that's good. Data columns to freeze, two. So I'm guessing that's going to be the rank and the player maybe that gets frozen. I don't know. Let's expand that out. Uh, player game, player per game table. Okay. Column group. We have these different columns. Let's see, table head. Okay, now we're getting somewhere because now we have the headers here. TR. TR is going to stand for table row. Um, so now we're actually, all right, so within this table row, we have these different headers. So we have rank, player, position, player's age on February 1 of the season, or data stat, age. Um, so you can kind of go through here and, and find your way around and see what you're looking for. So obviously, if we wanted to pull these values out, we'd want to go for table row in table head, we want the label because we want rank, we want player, position. Um, so that, that's what we're going to be looking for. Now, um, for the data, it's going to be the same thing. We have our table body. T body, table body, then we have each row is a TR, and it tells you which row it is, index starting at zero. We can open that up, and then we have the rank is rank one, okay. Adams ST01, so that's, you can see, data append CSV, that's his ID within their CSV they're building this from, data stat player, and what it shows, you know, Adams comma Steven. If we break that out, then we have a link to Steven Adams, so we can actually go to his page, which is what this is referring to. So within that cell, it tells us all of that information, including the link to get to it. And then, you know, center. And as we go down, we have age 26, team ID. Okay, well, there's a link there too, so this, we're going to have that link. And then games 58, game started 58. So if we're wanting to loop through this, we might say for table row in table body, I want, you know, all of these cells. Okay. So that, that's how you kind of want to navigate it going this way. If you don't care to spend the time to know all of this and you just need, I need the information on this page now. Let's say you need field goal attempt. I can right click that, I can inspect, and it's going to take me right to that spot within the HTML. Um, so that's how you're going to navigate through there. All right, everyone, that's going to wrap up this video. Um, we will have a part two for Beautiful Soup coming that's going to detail how exactly we take that information out. I didn't want to throw too much at you at one time, so we, we wanted to break it up into two segments. One, kind of getting familiar with what we're looking for and how we're going to get there. And then a, a second video, now after you've had time to practice a little bit, um, where you'll actually be able to see it in action, uh, pulling data out and how to get it into a format that is usable in, in whatever applications you may have. So that's going to be it for this video. Thanks everybody for watching. If you want to stay up to date and want to make sure you get to watch that next video as soon as it comes out, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. And if you like this video, go ahead and give me a like so I know what type of content to keep creating in the future. Thanks guys. See you next time.